Hi, this is Kim Pinkney, and welcome to my channel. Alrighty, so today I am going to draw uh, Clarence Williams III as Link Hayes in the future. And it's just going to pretty much be like a portrait, but I'm thinking I'm going to do some crazy stuff to him as well. Um, this is one of these brothers that, uh, uh, from the Mod Squad, and let's see. It's just going to pretty much be kind of, well, we'll see what I come up with. Things change. Get my colors on. Now I'm going to kind of warm myself up by figuring out where things are going to go here. And um, with him, I remember the, the, the show was both before my time, but it was no less popular and no, no less iconic. Um, been mentioned in a lot of uh, other shows, especially the shows that are like kind of retro. And uh, it's been, the, the it, it's kind of like 21 Jump Street uh, in the, uh, the 1968 era and uh, but yeah no um, as I was doing research on uh, the show I found out like different things and I thought that was pretty cool but then I started having an epiphany that it's like every black show or shows with a uh, a cast of uh, black people, especially if it's a majority cast, um, were always labeled as like a black show, and uh, it it hurt them, even though they had like really good ratings and things like that. It's like they were like the first to be canceled, you know, things like that. It's like oh, it's a black person show, nobody cares, even though everybody was watching it and everybody was influenced, especially uh, this show. Um, the Mod Squad. This was one that is like totally um, groundbreaking because it, it just didn't show black people like this and it didn't show the counterculture of the 60s like this. And um, another thing about the show is that uh, one of the producers, uh, Aaron Spelling, I believe that's who it was, that man has been in everything from Love Boat to this, I mean, man has been around. Um, a lot of the shows that I liked were Aaron Spelling productions. But anyway, I digress. Um, see, I already forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> but, um, yeah. This was, like, super iconic. And even to this day, you see... Uh, similarities that come back from the show but one of the cool things now I remember what I was going to say was that um, he vowed to never have these guys arrest kids because that was like one of the biggest things in the 60s wouldn't arrest kids and nobody gets shot they're not gonna carry guns so if anybody gets shot it ain't gonna be from these guys these cats and then as I was going through um, like the cast and I guess guest stars and stuff like that to the show the uh, I was surprised at all the people that are uh, were in the show at one time or another um, and more than likely as a guest appearance there was a lot of black folk I was like oh this is cool so you had like Sammy Davis jr. you had like Louis Gossett jr. I'm not sure who she is, but I was like, oh my god, they got as many uh, black folks as The White Shadow. That's another show um, that was a little before my time, but I remember it playing um, late at night or before my bedtime. I was a little, little kid. No, little Kim. Little Kim, uh. Um, and uh, I just wasn't really into those shows. You know, cartoons was my thing. But I knew they were there, and my parents watched it. Um, and uh, especially, I, I remember seeing uh, reruns of uh, The White Shadow, and I've heard of Mod Squad off and on. 
this was the 60s, I was, I was a 70s child, 70s child, um, but uh, these actors um, definitely uh, were still around and iconic at that time. Um, let me go. I'm gonna bring this down because he kind. This is kind of reminding me of um, uh, what's his name, Morpheus. So I want to try to give these kind of vibes uh, that he's gonna have kind of like the Morpheus glasses. And they're going to be like futuristic. I'm going to keep that big fro. But I'm thinking about doing something in the fro. Because um, I'm, I'm thinking that um, the counterculture, uh, I want to say for these, these darn whippersnappers of the future, uh, they're going to have a lot of LED stuff and they'll be able to alter their bodies their, uh, from each individual strand of hair to their eyes and a cop like Link Hayes um, needs to be able to uh, go undercover at will and be able to uh, change and fit in and it's really interesting um, I was watching a YouTube video because I couldn't find anything else that was going to give me a lot of information um, about the show because I, I didn't know that they didn't carry guns I don't know if they held you know stuff fast to that rule but that definitely changed how I was going to do this 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 uh, image. Uh, I was gonna put him with a futuristic gun, but this guy, this cat, no gun. Even though this future is pretty brutal, but when um, I realized that um, a lot of these shows of the 60s and 70s and even the 80s, they all tackled the same issues: inequality. Um, oppression of in its very forms you know drug abuse just abuse of people in general you know um, slum lords and you know all those shows uh, featured a lot of trauma especially the ones that that were suffered in the black community and uh, communities of color and, and I started thinking um, okay so these shows tackled all that stuff and were groundbreaking in their time but it's like now I look around me I'm like we still have this shit y'all didn't do a good job <laughs> you may have brought it to the, the forefront but you didn't do squat about it <laughs> you know it's still here but then again that may be a universal truth you know crime's gonna crime haters gonna hate greed's gonna greet you know it is what it is. But how you respond to it is what's going to make the difference. So I'm just trying to kind of get what I want before I... Um, and I want to get a really good likeness of him uh, before I do my um, inking phase. Now, I, I apologize, I was going to do a, uh, what's it called, a grayscale version of my Catwoman, but I didn't get around to it yesterday. So, if you guys um, are downloading the pictures and you like what you're downloading, let me know if you'd like to see um, or have the option of a, a grayscale version. Because that could be as easy as me just doing something like this. Um, taking the image that I've got here 
and just kind of using my soft brush and just getting it the way I want that way I can get um, a lot of the features here a little softer get some different color variations and actually kind of get it to let's see I'll see if I can vary the lines a bit so that we have soft and hard uh, lines but I am really having a blast um, grabbing just characters from the past and trying to apply them to the future it's like now what would and I think um, out of all the characters I think uh, the kids from different strokes would probably have the most fun because being a kid and having money <laughs> you know and but I can still see them still enduring the same you know crap <laughs> just uh, what was it called uh, same different shit same flies or same flies I forget how that same shit different flies something like that I forget that expression I always used to say I can't used to say same shit different flies Okay, so, so this is going to be pretty much like a grayscale version of this Bretta. Let's see, we'll throw some whiskers on him. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, I could probably even get away with this right here. Actually making his skin look like skin. Bring that up a little bit. Like cut a deck. <laughs> oh, and I totally am going to we'll give his hair some texture too. I'm just gonna soften this up. Now I was thinking about doing like around the outside here, like ones and zeros. Um, let's see. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, I'm gonna try something. Um, let me do this. If the uh, feature of this canvas thing here, uh, drawing guide, and edit drawing guide, Symmetry and uh, options for symmetry. I was going to do, let me try the radial again. There we go. And then we'll say the center will be about like right there. I wonder if it won't bring it in. So I have it like right there. Go done. And then I was just wondering if it will let me add like numbers. And then if I do add numbers, will it put it into different places? It doesn't look like it's doing it. So it, it probably looks like it only works with pencil strokes. Uh, do, so let's try this. Um, I need that. Yeah, it's, it, I was hoping that it would do, um, oops, I was hoping it would do the binary numbers um, all, in all the quadrants, but it's not going to. So, let me try another one. Oops, that's an O. I want a zero. Okay. And I'm going to change the font to 
into like one of those futuristic type fonts. Da, 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 da. I can do digital. Let's see. Uh, oh, now that'd be crazy. You have graffiti uh, binary numbers. Um, that would be kind of cool. Let's do that. So, you know, for countercultural cultural purposes. So since I cannot um, get these to duplicate in all places unless I trace it. So let me see. I want to see if I can distort this. So it's like that, but smaller. Let's see. So about like this maybe a little smaller so it looks like his his fro is going to be giving out like ones and zeros okay let's see if i can trace it and i think it didn't do it because it's on its own layer, but now that we're on this layer, I'm going to see if I can trace it and it should um, show itself in other places. So maybe his hair will be like the mandala. Okay. Now I'll probably just erase those guys down below. Let's see if I can. And I'll make this one much smaller. So I'm pretty much just focusing what's on the fro. What's on your fro, bro? Let's see. If I can get get a little distortion going. And some of it's not going to be perfect. Let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot you can tweak it, Kim. That way they're not touching. So we got that going. It, I think the one and zeros are a little too difficult to see. Like they don't really look like ones and zeros. Maybe because I distorted it too much. Let's see. Let me take the assist off. Okay, then I can erase without um, affecting the other guys. I bet the digital numbers probably would look better. It doesn't look bad like this though.
I, I'm thinking I want to make it. Oh, I could have set it to outline mode. Let's see. Let me try something. Da -da 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 -da. We delete all that. Delete. Uh, da -da -da. I want. Let's see. And instead of the graffiti text, let's go ahead and try. I'll try digital. I kind of like that. Let me try that. Uh, I'm going to change that to... Uh, that might make sense too. That zero is a little wide. Let me try something here. Uh, we'll change that from digit to... Where'd you go? Digital. Okay, that looks like that looks like it makes more sense. Okay, so we'll do that. You know, it's kind of funny because he's in the future, and um, let's see, we'll just duplicate those. Oh, I can't do controls. <laughs> I'm so used to doing control uh, V to paste anything. There we go. There we go. It's so funny. I'm like, how do I do control V? <laughs> so lazy. Okay, uh, let me stop. All right. Let's see. If anybody hopped into the chat? I know it's early. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Let's see. Okay, so we got this. I'm going to switch it over to... And, oops. Stop! It's got features. Okay, I don't want you selected. I want you selected. And select all. And then I'm going to go back to this. And hit that. So that people could color these. And hate me for it. Because um, they're so tiny. And go down. Now I want to change a bit of the outline. It's gonna be getting all stupid. Okay, stop doing that. Okay, we're gonna make we're gonna distort it a little bit so it looks like it's kind of coming from his head. And I want it to be kind of like how this uh, these little lines here are. And just kind of. Tweak it a little bit. Let's see, distort. So it'll kind of fade from his fro. Um, so we'll duplicate this. And we'll see, rotate 45 degrees. Perfect. I guess these are perfect 45 degree angles. If I merge them and then do 45. Drop the opacity just a bit too. Um, let's see. Make it. I want them to vary in sizes too. Oops.
try something if I get. I kind of like this size. Hmm. Or would it be better if it was a fill that was just ones and zeros? Hmm. And I just kind of want it in a certain area. Let me see. Oh, you know what would be kind of cool is to have a uh, uh, an afro pick of ones and zeros. That would be cool. Oh, that would be cool. Okay, let me delete that. Because I was only thinking that I was going to put, let's see, if I do this, um, like a little, whoops, make a little selection. And only this part of his afro that's lit up, that would be in the um, highlighted area, would get like the ones and zeros. Hmm. I'm tempted to see if I can create a, a grid like that. Or if I could find one. Um, let's see. As soon as I hit this... Oh, no. Do I get to keep the selection? Sweet. Okay. Uh, let's see if I still have that uh, paste option. Yes! Huh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um... Do I want it to go with this fro or not with this fro? Let me just do it with ones and zeros left and right here. Um, trying to think, what do I want to do? Oops, I cleared in one area. Let's see. And it rosterized. Damn it. Okay. Maybe if. Can I make this into a brush? I've got time for that. Okay, let me do something else here. Let me go to gallery. I'm gonna make my own damn brush. Actually, I, I didn't have to leave the gallery. Okay, hold on. So we'll just turn him off for a sec. And we'll turn off the grid. I don't need that. Uh, canvas. Turn off the drawing grid. Okay. Oh. I just need a square. Okay, so I'm going to use that. And I'll turn that off. And I remember it has to have... Let me change my background to black. Just temporarily. Got to have white letters. Okay, and then if I double click on that, I can hit paste. Let's see, I forgot how to enter. There we go. Paste again. So I'll make a whole layer of this guy here. Oh, I can select all. So I'll select all. Copy. And that's a really good size. Okay, and then we'll just duplicate. We'll just kind of vary it a bit. Merge those together. Duplicate. Slide some oil to me. And I'm too lazy to go back and retype. So 
It's just gonna be ones and zeros. Duplicate. Sometimes I'm off, sometimes I'm on. And this should be a good brush. Um, let's see, we'll duplicate. And this should be the last one here, because this is just so riveting. And I could be weird and make it smaller to fit in between. Make it a lot smaller so it really fits. Or I could do that. Yeah, I almost don't mind the overlapping. Okay, oof, my eyes are like jumping. Okay, so I want to do another one of this, but I want to drop the opacity. And I want to bring it over a little bit, so it'll kind of give it like a dimension looking type of thing. And I just want to do one more. And drop the opacity even further. And then make it even smaller. Come on, you. I'm trying to do like a matri matrixy type of pattern. And that smaller one. Just bring it over this way. Alright, good enough for government work. So we're just going to merge and copy. And I'm going to go to that one brush that I had created uh, last time. Did I put it in my favorites? No. I had it in luminance, I think. Mm, right here, light pen too. Uh, let me edit that. Double click. The shape. Edit. And this is how you create different brushes in here. It's pretty easy. Um, import and paste. There we go. Ooh, it's kind of horizontal. Uh, let's see. We'll just flip it. All right. Let's see what it gives us. If we go done. Okay, we'll turn that off. Turn back our undercover Bretta. Oops, go on background color. Yeah, I'm going to change my brush to black. Whoops, cancel. Uh, we'll put it here and I'll do that selection. Like that uh, afro comb could be his, uh, what is the word? Um, Ooh. <laughs> now that's a bunch of ones and zeros. Okay, let's see if we can make it bigger. Um, those are pretty tiny. I wonder if it'll let me expand it. Oh, it'll only expand that. Let me clear this. I could do a clipping mask type of thing. Let's see, let me turn you back on. Ooh, look at that. Pretty. Um, I almost like that. Sticky bun. 
hide. Mm. Let's see, I'm going to use that. Okay, so I'm going to select this. And on this layer, I'm going to paint it black, but it'll also have ones and zeros painting it. Come on, you. There we go. Difference. I should have set it to clipping mask, but R didn't. Okay. Definitely weird. Okay. And turn that off for the moment. Oh. Let's see. We don't need that. And so I'll just go ahead and uh, trim a little bit of this. duplicate it just in case uh, I mess it up completely turn that one off and then this one here I'm gonna liquefy a little bit um, do I want to push Ooh, if I twirl it see what happens Ooh, too much distortion it doesn't make any sense okay so we reset I'll push it so that And another thing I could do is just kind of warp it this way. So yes, it's binary fro. like with that back on. We, I don't think we need this one anymore. Okay. So we got kind of like this weirdness going on in his fro. Now uh, for those of you uh, who are a little bit older and or a little bit younger I guess who've uh, seen what was it called? It was a black horror movie. You'll recognize Clarence Thomas from this one picture. I guess you'd still be older, huh? Um, what was it called? I think it was Tales from the Hood. Yeah, it was Tales from the Hood. And uh, this brother is uh, the one that was uh, Mortuary. And that's the same guy. It's, it's, it was a good horror uh <laughs> good horror movie <laughs> tales from the hood if you can find it and watch it it was awesome um, let's see we did that with that all right so let's finish up old boy here and i don't know i was debating whether or not i want to do the entire cast but i'm like nah not today maybe another time um but I like the idea of um, undercover futuristic people, and uh, in oops, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong neck of the woods. Uh, let's see, we, ooh, I could probably use this in his glasses. Let me do this. Um, I'm gonna show that layer, uh, but it'll have to be above him. Yeah. And then, uh, if I give his glasses just a little bit of a tint, let's see, 
I need to give it another layer. So like right above that, just kind of still have that brush yeah okay let's see it's already big so I'm just gonna tap maybe if oh that was weird I didn't know I could do that if you tap and hold I didn't know that. What? You tap and hold, and I can. I made my brush bigger. Let's see. Why did it. No quick shape. That was crazy. It's like I tapped and like pushed down, and I got that weird effect. I wonder if that does it with all the brushes. It could be just you trying to treat it like it's a, a color, but I'll take it, bump it. Um, and then um, I like that the white that's already around there. So can I make a clipping mask or a mask out of this? Um, yes. Okay. It's a little busy though. Um, let's see if I can drop the opacity of spell. Ooh, I like that. You can see the one uh, and the zero, or the two zeros. That's pretty cool. So I think what I want to do is I'll see if I can get those two to merge. And then I'm going to kind of soften. What's going on in the, the picture here? If it'll let me. Soften, damn you. It's not affecting the little guys underneath. Do I already have them on here? Oh, okay. Because they're on a different layer. Okay, so it's softening. Oh, oh, okay. What I'm trying to do is kind of uh, darken it a little bit, um, the shades. If I use this here, and instead of the ones and zeros, um, let's see. I could use that. Because I want uh, a person to be able to... Um, add their own tone to it, so like maybe red or something like that, or or black, but I want this, oops, let me back it up, I just kind of want to put it so that the zeros here will show, there we go, creepy, awesome, but creepy, I like it, I like it. Okay, so let me get back to my source image here. Let's see, so we have that dark there, and it was a little dark here. Lovely. Lots of texture. Ooh, we could put something like digital on his face. Something, um, let's see, his name was Link. We can do something to him. I'm trying to think, what do we want to do to dear Link here? There's, I don't know what this stuff is and where it's coming from. I don't know if it's on, maybe it's this layer. So I don't raise hell Should the 
and see if I can get that effect again um, with the luminance brush. Oops. Let's see, I think it was either like a blue-gray that let me do an outline-ish. I put it on its own layer so in case I screw it up. I am liking so far how it's turning out, so I'm going to merge those two layers together. Because I believe I only get 11 layers to play with. Yeah. I'm bring that down a bit, and I just want to kind of highlight here. And I'm trying to debate whether or not I want to get all the way around. No, looks kind of tacky that way. Maybe just and then maybe something on his face like a tattoo um, oh you know it'd be super cool maybe it wouldn't be but if he had razor stubble or a goatee that had the ones and zeros oh but in he's really clean shaven in uh, the picture but just for giggles um, Let's see. See, I play like I got all the freaking time in the world. Uh, one of my favorite brushes to create um, hair texture, uh, kinky hair texture. Um, let me see. It was a charcoal brush. And let me see if I can find it. Charcoals. And the 6B. Let me see. I'm going give it, to give it to him like right here. Give it to him, Cam. Give it to him. I'm going to put it on a different layer. That way I can turn, turn it off if I need to. But you see how it gives it like a really random... Um, and that's kind of like a, a really rough hair texture. And I could do that on his afro. So let's see. But I don't want to take away from people's... Uh, coloring maybe if I make it a little bigger that way if they want to put like a color tone another one that's a good hair texture for um, uh, folks that want to do um, like black folks hair texture the 4c type hair is the um, especially if they're um, people that have uh, what's the word finer curls um, that would be the hairbrush tool and I moved mine around I shouldn't have moved it um, but it's the short hairbrush and usually it's in touch-ups you can find it in the touch-ups area here um, you can find all the hair brushes here the stubble fine hair um, and what I'm looking for is the short hair brush and I put it in my hair here so the short hair brush here and if you take it and do like little squiggles like this you can get a really good um, curly hair texture it's got to be careful not to do that that looks more like fur but if you really want to get a really good hair texture because um, 4C hair all it is is hair that is um, really super tight curls just like that
Let me download that song. I want to use that one for um, Catwoman. Okay, back to the back to the drawing cam. But yeah, so like a combination of both um, the charcoal brush, and I think what I'll do is I'll get rid of the outline that I've got, um, and it looks better with this instead of me doing that. And then I'll have, so um, that should give folks um, a really good base there. Like with it by itself, this is pretty good for like um, people with very fine hair, fine curly hair. But if you really want to get that, that really hardcore nappy look, nappy look coarse hair look let's do like and I'm doing like circles in this kind of form this is really good for like afro puffs and I've I've got a video where um, I do it with a pencil it's the same kind of um, same kind of pattern but this one here is with the procreate brushes so um, maybe I'll do um, an, an updated version of uh, the hair. I want to come back and put the uh, what's that brush again? The charcoal brush. Like the six. Come on you. There you are. So 6B compressed first. Give yourself a nice little base. And this is just like one um, go round with it. And then the closer it is to the uh, the bottom and the face, because I'm assuming that the light is up here. I don't want to go too deep into it with this. But yeah, I think you'd look tight with um, a one and zero uh, type of like fade. I think that'll be my next... Um, character I think I'll add that character um, I'm also uh, getting ready to do a uh, web comic okay so once you do the 6b compressed hop on into the hair texture this uh, hair texture comes with um, ooh, I could throw that grid in there somewhere okay stay focused Kim. <laughs> all right it's in my f it's in my hair it's something that I created okay and then short hair brush and I love how it just has that that look of texture already am I using it oh, okay yeah there we go it just wasn't doing it wasn't doing its thing I don't want to go too dark because I know people want to do their own thing and I get super pissed off when um, I don't have a place to color. It's like, you took my coloring away. So I started, uh, I started um, going over things with like white so that I, I, I can dictate what color is going here. So you've got like, uh, the darker you are, like right now I'm using a light touch. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Oh. Bring it, keep it up. I'm gonna keep it up for his fro. And I'm just gonna come around the edges. So we have uh, a little bit of definition here. And I'm, now I'm doing a light touch as I'm getting up closer to the top. And just kind of keep it tight, little circles. The, the, the brush itself seems kind of square. So like if you just tap, it looks like that. Because all it is is like a bunch of little circles, little dots. Let me see. Um, that's the short hair brush. And the grain, I'm sorry, the shape is just a bunch of dots. And that gives me those, that, that kick-ass hair. There they are. 
Uh, now the bigger your curls, the bigger that, you know, you know, the bigger your curls. Now, if your swirls are small, it's very tight curls. So, tight curls, big swirls, and then, you know, if you, and if you go in like one direction, you got fur. Beautiful fur brush. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna vary my um, loops a bit so that it looks a little bit more natural. A natural, uh. Now if um, you're doing it and you're, um, you can always, you know, and, and things just don't seem to be uh, meshing, like right here is kind of rough looking. Um, you can come back, oops, I didn't want it to look that rough. Um, change this, your, your smudge brush to the short hair brush. And it'll smudge with the pattern, hopefully. Let me see if I can get in here. So like if you have like an SF, uh, and it is smearing it. I don't want to smear it. But this also helps like if you need to build up tones. You got people like with blonde hair and um, hair like that. Let's see, I'm going to try to get my short hair brush to do what I want to do right here. It just looked a little piecemeal. or Like he didn't pick it out properly. Yeah, I think that's what happened. There we go. Plus I need an update, so I'm thinking that it's giving me some grief. Okay, don't want to go too dark, because if it was me, I'd probably want to, like, maybe give him, like, a little bit of purple in his hair. A little bit of black, to blue to purple. And maybe even see if I can make these, let, these numbers here light up a bit. So you still want those to stay visible. All right, bro. Okay, now um, I created my own um, skin brush, but there are skin brushes here in this uh, program. Um, Stubble is really good for, um, like, say you got a guy who's got a fade. Um, say that we want his. Uh, his not goatee sideburns here mutton chops to kind of fade a little bit instead of being like all the way fuzzy um, the stubble is really good for that as well as adding a little bit of texture um, that he's unshaved type of texture all right okay so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my lines a bit Let's see, and I'm thinking I'll probably keep them, we'll use the syrup brush and we'll just kind of keep it thin. That way, uh, if you're anything like me, oops, let me put it on another layer. But I did a lot of work on this layer. Okay, come on, Ken, what are you going to do? Okay, we'll merge layers. So I'll take this, put my outline on this layer. Just kind of keep it kind of thin. So like if you want to do realistic, it's hard to do when everything is outlined for you. So, uh, but if it's the thin line, um, you can kind of think of the outline I just created as a uh, an area where shadows would go. Um, every line that you create or every line that an artist creates is the difference between um, light and shadow so um, that's one way of looking at it so like if I was going to do like there will be a different color between his skin and the background um, and in order to make that line right 
here disappear either your background will need to be this color which means you you know kind of shade it all the way to his skin right here or your skin would be this color that's the secret of making these lines disappear um, especially when you're working with color so like um, and uh, once you kind of get that down you'll you'll hate when people outline the lips completely um, I'm gonna go ahead and erase a little bit so that um, because around the lips here oh, erase Kimberly around the lips uh, is usually a highlight especially if you're coloring realistic this is usually light because um, your lips kind of jut out. This part right here is usually dark. I'm going to change this from my, there we go, fuzzy brush. <coughs> and then um, I'm going to kind of, when I do this grayscale here, I'm going to kind of shade downwards so it's kind of like the highlight is your outline oh, excuse me um, let me see I'm going to bring my source image over so you can see what I'm talking about as I'm drawing this actually let me open it up in here. That way it doesn't um, overlap the picture itself. Oops. My stuff is going to stop charging. Okay, here we go. Bam. Uh, darn it. Let's see, this one is my BHM. Blah, history ma. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Here we go. Let's open that up. And then we'll bring this here, over here, and yeah, these are all the actors that I, I saw in uh, the show. Wow, that show was out for a while, because um, that's my year. And I'm like, wow, these are like actors and actresses I've never heard of, but I know these two clowns. <laughs> And it was funny, um, they were talking about the cast in uh, Mod Mod Squad, if you want to call it Mod Podge, and, <laughs> and um, they were talking about how Peggy Lipton, uh, uh, the white female on the show, um, married uh, Quincy Jones and had Rashida Jones, who's famous. Um, you know, and, and she's gorgeous. <laughs> I ain't hating. I ain't hating. Um, I'm going to soften that up a bit. Because no nose should be, like, hardcore black like that. Now, um, some of the things that intimidate people about uh, coloring realistic is that um, if they can understand the light and shadow... Uh, this stuff is no longer intimidating. Um, you understand, it, and everybody's seen it, the circle, uh, what is it called? Where you, where you have the sphere, you know, and you have the circle with the, you know, you got the little lighted area, and then it's dark, and, and stuff like that. Well, the same thing happens with like the nose and all parts of your face where you have where it's light right here because the light's hitting it the most and it's like so hitting it so hard that it's white and bright. That's kind of what's happening here. And, and it varies depending on where the light is actually hitting um, the face. So um, if you can understand those concepts and apply them as you color, your life will be so much easier. 
So you see uh, this area around his lips that's that's got that like whitish tone? That's what I was kind of emulating here without really looking at him. <laughs> Make sure that this brush is not syrup, but soft brush. So what's happening here is that this part is in shadow. His nose is either sticking out farther or his lips are jutting out, you know, the teeth underneath are jutting his lips out. So I'm going to add the shadows and depending on how the, the lights, uh, where the light is angled. So he might be outside. That's a possibility. And then you've got light that kind of reflects and bounces back up. So what I do is I just find the color tones and changes um, and I just kind of utilize that. So it's dark here, then it gets lighter, almost to white. And I just kind of blend these guys together. And then you get a shape. Um, you always keep in mind, wherever there's a dark area, there will always be a corresponding light area. Light cannot exist without darkness especially if we're trying to give something shape. So like um, right here around his nose here, it's, it's catching a lot of light. Almost to the point where it's almost the same tone as this right here around his, his lips. So what I usually do is I try to find the differences in tone and that's what I try to um, accomplish. So I say, is this the tone here in this nostril here? Is it the same as this here? If it's not, I'll just try to alter it to where either um, it, it's more accurate or, or it is one or the other. I know that's a lot of stuff to take in, but um, if you can tell the difference between certain areas, and that's uh, another reason why I would switch pencils a lot. It's like, another question is like, when do you switch pencils? You know, when you're, when you're using uh, colored pencils or, um, or when you're just using graphite, because you've got like the HB, the F, the, 2H, all that stuff. Each one, each one of those those pencils, look, I'm talking about colored pencils as I'm drawing digitally, um, gives you a different hardness and a degree of shadow. And um, like your HB pencil will never be black. You can press as hard as you want, but um, it will never be, it'll never get you to like a pure black. Um, only way you're going to get that is if you have a, a hard, not a hard pencil. The hard pencils are the soft ones. The H pencils, they're all the ones that give you these beautiful little tones. These this beautiful grays. They're all shades of gray. And uh, the higher the number, the, you know, the harder the pencil, the higher, the softer the gray. Um, like my favorite, um, my favorite... H pencil is the 6H pencil. Hard to find, doesn't come in sets, but it is, uh, it gives you a beautiful um, base tone if you're doing faces. And then uh, from there, I would use the uh, 2H and the 4H pencil to, to give it more of like the tones that you see here. But, um, it's not uncommon for me to, to start out a, um, a drawing, a, a graphite drawing with the 6H pencil. Um, because it's like, it just gives it a base for everything else to lay on. And it will help you make your, um, make things disappear when you don't need them. So like, um, it just, it, it's just a really good pencil. If you can get your hands on a 6H um, pencil, Oh my gosh, it'll change your religion um, with graphite. I don't, I don't ever want to do uh, another portrait without one. 
and um, yeah, all the others um, will give you just different degrees, and you just change because each one of the pencils will give you a different degree of of gray, and they can only go so far. I'm gonna start merging these guys together because I can't. Um, let's see, I'm going to merge this one together. I could probably get away with everybody. Okay, yeah. We do everybody. Everybody wants to be a cat. I should have merged the outline though. Um, only because um, I want to keep it nice and crisp for those who like outlines. Otherwise I can kind of soften it and let's see. I'm going to use switch this back to my short hairbrush. And just kind of get this around the edges here and a lot of portrait drawing is all about proximity um what's closest to what so like i'm looking at his area right here and at the shapes so i'll probably just kind of dip into the outline a little bit and try to emulate what i see which is this like mutton chop type of thing going on I'm being very generous. Now a lot of people will not be able to see because I'm like super zoomed in. That's what the uh, picture will look like there so far. But the more tones you add, the more depth you create. Um, the more impressive the picture becomes. Um, but I don't want to take away from that coloring experience. By, uh, you know, grayscale can do that to you. Um, so I'm, I'm debating whether or not to take out all my tonage. I'm going to leave it in since I've already, you already did it, Kim. You already been done, did it. So just keep doing it. Okay, so I'm just going to add the shadows and stuff that I see here. And just kind of soften some others. Because I don't want to encroach on others' creativity by adding too much. Oops. Get that back to the soft brush. Now, um, think of lips when they meet as uh, soft pillows just kind of squishing together. They are two pieces of flesh like pushing against each other. So you're going to have like creases. And that's where um, some of these lines are coming from. And I'm taking um, a few liberties here and there. And you'll you'll see that there's some highlights here in the lips so one of the things that you can you can get away with um, if you're aware of the sphere and I'll just do a quick one real quick um, actually let's see, I can use that to do that and then um, let's see if this will let me soften nope. It like that. Another way of looking at it. Okay, light hits it, bam, right there in the center there, or off center or whatever, wherever the light's coming from. And we're assuming 
that the light is hitting like this. And this is going to apply to the lips. Um, so let's make it a lip shape. I need mean, erase a little bit. Well, not erase. Let's make a little bit bigger. Okay, so imagine these are his lips. Uh, the light is hitting it pretty hard in this little area right here. So wherever it hits, there's going to be a corresponding darkness to it. Um, when light hits something, it kind of spreads. So I'm going to spread out some of this light here. And depending on what's getting hit by the light, the further away from the light, the least amount of uh, light it's going to get. Um, so we're hitting it, we're getting it super close right here. And then as we curve away from the light, it gets darker and darker, but then it gets to turn on light. Uh, no, it gets darker and darker. I'm trying to get in there, get in there, Kim. But it'll never be as bright as this up here because it's getting the most light. And the further away from the light that you get, the darker things become. So it becomes super dark. Looking right here at this, uh, the, the place between his, uh, the two lips, it's dark. It's really super dark. But there's always a corresponding light. So as the lips kind of curl upwards, you start to see that light hit it. I'm sorry, this is all like impromptu. But it'll start to make a lot more sense. So like if I'm coloring him, um, this area right here where the lips are divided or come together rather, is dark. But then you get that light. Um, I'm going to give this a, a lighter gray. I'll give it about like right there. And then you start to see the light and then it gets dark again right here so like say this was a woman or a, a guy that likes to wear makeup and this was a red tone this would be like a deep deep dark red to, to almost black and then it starts to warm up to pink and then maybe to the red that you want about right here and it's just dark right before the light. And I'm gonna soften that a little bit. But because these are soft, fleshy uh, pieces of skin and stuff, it's round, it's squishy, it, it catches light in different places. It's not perfect light, you know, where, or it's not like a perfectly hard area, like a, like a hard surface. These are very soft surfaces. So what I'm doing is I'm pretty much looking at the differences in tones. Like this is dark and this is dark, but how dark is this part versus um, this part up here? You know, and then if you can emulate their own little tones or, you know, if you can kind of uh, find the tonal differences and copy that tonal difference you'll have um, the shapes that you need and uh, you'll definitely have some interesting colors um, Patty's Hobby World uh, does a very good job of uh, capturing that in her uh, coloring Uh, because she uses uh, like about three colors um, in order to give um, her 
her art shape, her coloring shape. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of, get rid of a little bit of that there around the side there. Because naturally, and, and we don't have outlines around our, our faces. And one way to make your um, your art look um, more realistic is to go ahead and you've got that outline, but let that outline be that difference between um, the you know your background and your your actual uh, subject. Give it um, that white spot here. Let me see if I can do that. You see how we have the lips here, kind of with that highlight. Give it that highlight around the edges. You don't have to color all the way to the edge. And if you if you don't, you can give yourself a little bit more roundness to your, your picture than if you colored, you know, right to the line. Um, you can kind of see that when I do the... Um, oh, what is that picture? Um, I did a... I colored Captain America... Uh, to don't stop me now and uh, I did that where you have yourself like this little white spot here either uh, kind of make that the lightest color for your skin uh, or you know have it be like white like I would use peach for his skin here and right here where his nostril would be so right above his nostril I'm going to try to give it another little tone here. And I can just kind of drag a little bit here. It's kind of hard to see how his nose is shaped because I don't see a really defining... Uh, what is it called? Um, tip. I think this might be the tip of his nose. But I can't... I'm not really sure because there's so many different little lights ha happening at the same time. Plus it's an ancient picture. See, I'm adding highlights so you don't have to. So if you do color him monochrome, um, like if you just color him brown, you'll still have like a lighter shade of brown um, that's happening. Okay to get that nose in there. Noses are soft. I don't like hard outlines around the nose unless it's like a, a really hard uh, like the only hard outlines that I like are in the nostrils and even then I'm like giving it the side eye. It's only where it's the darkest is where I would uh, I would like get away with adding something that hard and that, that dark. Otherwise, I only want my noses to be soft. Like, uh, I don't want anybody to color it in. If anybody, you know, just give me like these little, little dips here. That way I know where the nostrils are and then I can plan the rest of the nose accordingly. And just pay attention to where your lights are, how much um, the colors change, things like that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we're gonna bring this texture down. Um, <laughs> porous facial texture, uh, created it. There we go, and I'm just gonna use a little bit here. Alright, so the futuristic part of him, I want to throw a, a jacket on him. One of the things that, um, or actually, let's see. There's a, there's some futuristic stuff that I want to kind of add to. Let's see, I'm trying to decide, where do I want to put something like that? Oh, I guess I don't. Anyway, uh, let's see. I wanted to give him a like an urban look. I like the idea of big and bulky jacket and stuff like that. Um, 
the only thing is I don't want to lose that face <laughs> that face um, so this one I'll do like a portrait for those of us who like to do portraits that is one of my most frustrating things is that if I don't get to play with a portrait I, I'm not having no fun in my coloring book let's see and let's play with some of the collars because we can get away with um, a high collar I was thinking about doing a hoodie but um, I really like some of the Japanese uh, jackets that I've seen uh, I don't think I've captured any that's pretty cool I like the spikes uh, and I like that around the let's see I wonder if I can do something similar to that um, I like see I don't want to cover up too much of his neck What do I want to? Oh, I like how the lights are coming around like this. So how about something like? Oops, something that comes down like that. I don't. I don't want to make him look like Elvis, though. I'm gonna change this to like a gray tone. Maybe not. Let's do this. Mm, no. Let's see. Something. So we can do a hoodie. What if the hood was like this instead of resting? Let's see. And he's undercover. See, I got a mad one for LED lights. Let's see. How. So we'll make that the hood. And I want it to be really bulky. That way you can hide any kind of weapons or wires. And since you're LED, you've got LED lights on. You know, uh, everything's wired. <laughs> Let's see. Let's give him a, a different type of color. How about... I think I can incorporate that same... I like how it comes down like that. Now this guy is all, every time I see him in a picture, he's always very stylish. So if he's going to do, if he's going to be part of the counterculture, he's definitely going to be looking stylish. So, uh, let's see. I'm gonna make a copy of this. Um, let me put this back on. Let's see. But before I do that, let's finish up this outfit here. Okay. Now these in the clothes, I don't care if um, they're hard lines. Oops. Before I do that, let's give it another layer. That way I can have clean lines.
this could be a light um, where are you okay maybe it's there we go I like the pulse pulse is beautiful um, the more you tap, the more you get these uh, gorgeous LED, well, LED lights. You get these, like, lighted thingamabobs. Let's see, I don't want it to be purple. Let's see, it was kind of like that bluish tone. So I, I'm thinking the LED light will be, like, right here. Let me see. Is it this one that does? Yeah. What brush is this? Light brush. Okay, so light brush gives me this. Whoops. Almost like that lightsaber. Womp, 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 womp. So I wanted to kind of light him up from within here. These could be lit. Yeah, I'm gonna incorporate that tiger in here somewhere. I think I'll give him some sort of like. Instead of doing this, because I want him to be able to conceal himself if he has to. So like Nah, I was thinking about putting a mask on him. I ain't covered up that beautiful face. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I suck at clothes. <laughs> but I like this. I like these these like slat type things coming down. Let's see. Now when I draw pictures, um, I kind of try to figure out how to make it look more practical. Things that he can let's see. Yeah, I can imagine him wearing kind of like a turtleneck. Maybe he could pull it up. Um, no, these are supposed to be like LED lights. Okay. I don't know. Let the people put their lights on, Kim. Okay, just do your outlines. Okay, so I'm gonna just do some outlines and um, let's see. I could do them in gray. That makes it easier to color over. Well, but then again, you could take a white pencil or something like that, go over it, and then add another color on top. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Let me go back to my beast here. I'll give him like... It's 
look so plain though. We want to go counterculture. I'm just trying different things here. Something that would be kind of cool that goes around. Um, I do like these. The squares. But I'm thinking maybe I might have just want to... A lot of his clothes that I've uh, seen him in, and they're simple, um, solid tones. Um, let me see, let me clear this one. Let's see, let's put something in there that looks cyber-ish. Uh, I hate to throw something like that at here. I like the lit. Let's throw it on the inside here. So it's like a light that goes around here. Maybe we can have a light here. So something crazy like that. Uh, I want to do something around the outsides here. Anyway, that's one idea. Okay, let's see if we can get... Well, I guess it will be alright. What time is it? Okay, for those of you who are just joining me, um, I'm going to do a quick replay. And this is Clarence Williams III uh, from the Mod Squad back in 1978. And I'm just trying to bring his, this undercover Bretta um, into the future. Now, um, I can see how uh, it would be kind of cool to have um, uh, the police in the future uh, being undercover, uh, like in Shadowrun and, and things like that. Uh, they can uh, just kind of infiltrate uh, the counterculture. It's funny, I did all that just to get those little things. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. But yeah, um, that maybe they can alter their looks. Um, 
you know, you're not necessarily carrying a gun, but there's other ways of messing with people, like using jammers and, um, what do you call it, electromagnetic pulse, uh, EMP type uh, weapons. Um, and then you could have like that stuff hardwired into your body and stuff like that and really just do some damage to these uh, cybernetic uh, people. But yeah, I was thinking about giving him like a... Oh, you know, it'd be so cool to have like LED beads and stuff like that. God, that'd be so cool. Um, you know, I should do like a futuristic soul train. <laughs> People are dancing on the ceilings and stuff like that. Yeah, keeping this guy kind of plain. Okay, so that's where I am thus far on here. I was going to see if I could throw like all kinds of crazy straps and stuff like that on him. But this is not a bad start. Alright you guys, um, I'm going to let you go on this one. And I have no idea what I'm going to do for tomorrow. But I'm, I'm just trying to get a few extra... Mm, I don't know, uh, but I want to at least get 28 images. So far, I've... Oh, uh, yeah. Let me upload this so that you can stop watching me and just grab your pictures. Like, come on, Kim. Uh, this picture will be uh, available as a PDF file. And the link is in the description. Just give me f a few seconds and I'll get that uploaded for you guys. Um, <laughs> it's in my drive. And this is free uh, to download in color. We only ask, or you know, I'm only asking that uh, you just, uh, if you post it anywhere, which I'd love to see, um, hashtag uh, coloring with coloring throwback Thursday 2021, um, coloring with Candace, hashtag Pinkney Kimberly. Just show us um, what you come up with. Uh, let's see. We'll do mod. Mod squad. No, squad of one, I guess. Uh, let's see. And you'll be able to find it in Throwback Thursday, Futurious February. And it'd be kind of cool to add like a futuristic background behind him. So you guys can like throw in your futuristic uh, ideas could be like ones and zeros I could throw ones and zeros behind him um, it'd be cool if it was like an animation where I could show him like transforming into different things different people I mean it'd be a lot of fun to see these guys in like a shadow run type of environment or uh, cyberpunk trying to do their job in that kind of uh dystopian society and uh, one of my ideas for um, a webcomic is to show that kind of society but from the point of being a kid growing up in that nonsense so there is our throwback Thursday picture and the other ones that I so far have um, available also in that folder um, Catwoman is not necessarily is not necessarily futuristic in this but she was a throwback so I got her um, Julia let me go back to the gallery uh, got Julia from that show uh, Willis and Arnold getting into trouble uh, let's see and let's see I've got uh, Carlton doing his little happy dance and I'd love to see this in a, a futuristic setting. And then I've got 2D on uh, skates, but I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to redraw uh, 2D. Or I'll also do maybe another Kim Fields. But that's what's available right now in the uh, folders. So you guys enjoy. And um, if you have a favorite show that was uh, that you'd like to see a character from any one of your favorite shows, um, just let me know and uh, we, we're probably on the same accord and I'll probably hop on that. Like I'm thinking about doing um, Martin and uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. 
right off the top of my head like what's happening characters good time characters uh, and I'm just like picking and choosing um, out of there and just tossing them into the future and you know whatever feature that we can come up with <laughs> you guys have a great one and i'll see you in the next video and maybe um maybe in one of my videos i'll color one of my images the way i kind of envision them all right take care you guys bye, -bye.